Live on Channel 5 and also live on My5. Amanda and Emily are still with me. And later, we're going to be asking, is it right to charge young drivers more car insurance? But now, uh, we are talking about parking tickets. A record 11 million parking tickets were issued in a year up to March from last year for private companies. Now, while councils issued almost 20,000 parking fines a day, uh, in the year before. Lisa Webb, which is consumer lawyer, is here to give her top tips on challenging a parking ticket. First off, uh, Amanda, have you been hit by uh, unfair parking tickets? Lexus, Everyone's got a story, a right? Few, a few times. Yeah. But yeah, but the worst one was I was, um, we went into a private car park, I was working, so, you know, taking the children to school, rushing. The machine wasn't working, ah. so I thought, oh, well, I can't pay. Came out, parking ticket on there phoned them up and I said, you know, it's ridiculous, I couldn't pay. Yeah, but underneath, at the bottom of the machine is, if the machine is not in use, please telephone. You know, I didn't have time to go scanning the machine yeah. with my eyes before. So I said earlier, didn't I, I paid it because I, I was a single mum and I was frightened. No, I thought I'm going to bailiffs knocking the door for £400 if I don't pay it. So I paid it, but I was so, so cross. And I mean, yeah. Well, we're going to get to what you should be doing if that happens to you. Uh, Emily? Well, I mean, I've had many parking fines in my time. <laughs> um, You're admitting to that on television. Yes, I'm admitting to that on, on national television. I think probably one of the things that I felt was the most unfair was that there's um, my neighbours have a disabled parking space outside their house and it was dark, rainy one night and um, they would parked in it, but it's a big space. And they have a small car, so there's lots of space for them. And I've got a very small Yaris and I parked and I thought I was not in this. My front real wheels were just just over mm. the line, which disintegrated anyway. And the next morning I saw that I had a parking ticket and I appealed it. I said, I, you know, my, my, my wheels were that much over and, they, and the council, because it's a council thing, because it's on the road, said, no. I thought it was really unfair. There's no, there's no leeway. Did you there. try and challenge it? I, of course. Of course I did. And were you successful? No. Yeah. Okay. But you tried. I was tried. Was it Birmingham okay. Council because they needed the money? No! <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, look. What were thinking? Lisa, let's yeah. uh, tackle the parking fine issue because I know a lot of people get very upset about it. But let's tackle the first thing because there's two types of parking fines. Yeah. Let's deal with the official ones. They're the ones that are issued by the police and your council. Um, and the we... DVSA as well. Yeah, that's yeah. what those look like. Penalty charge notice. Um, and that's, uh, do we call it a PCN or an FPN? FPN, fixed penalty notice, or PCN, penalty charge notice. You'll notice the word penalty is usually in there. Yeah. So it's a penalty. Like you say, not all uh, parking charges are created equal. This is what, what a lot of people consider to be the official one. Like you say, it, yeah. it's... This is because you've broken the law. Exactly. It's, it's an enforceable authority. An authority who can enforce laws against you is saying to you, Oi, you've done something wrong. Yeah. Cough up. But the different type of parking ticket that you can get from a private company, usually for having parked in private property, looks quite similar. And this one, instead of penalty, it says parking yeah. charge notice. But, I mean, when you put them two together, I'm not quite sure if people can tell the difference between one and the other. Exactly, and they do look very, very similar. Now, it's worth noting these are issued by private companies whose job it is to make money. Yes. It, it's a commercial setup. They are there to make money. I, I mentioned the word that penalty is not in this one because you will find these private companies very keen to avoid the word penalty. There's all sorts of case law about whether penalties are lawful or mm. not. So they don't use the word penalty a lot of the time. So parking charge notice, it's from a private company. It is not because you've broken the law. It's usually because you might not have complied with terms and conditions that have been imposed on you by the private company, whether you knew about them or not. OK. Um, I, I mean... Is it fair to regard this as a sort of a... This is almost like an invoice. The other one is you've, you've broken, broken the law. law. Exactly. So this, that is, one. this is an invoice, effectively, for... Yeah. So, yeah, that, this, that, this one, one, that one's the... We've the one broken the law. Yeah. yeah. And broken the law. And, 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 you know, that, that is a court date at some point if you don't deal with it. Yes. Uh, the other one is not a court date. That one is you've broken some sort of contract when you parked on private land and overstayed your welcome or didn't get the right ticket, and that's an invoice for from the private company. It is, but it's also worth adding to that. It's not necessarily a court date, but the mm. companies do have the ability to take you to court. OK. So in what instances would you say you could challenge a ticket? 
Loads. There are loads of reasons you might challenge, and it, is, it does differ depending on who you're mm. challenging it with. Say, for example, it's one of those penalty charge notices. This the is the one from the people. council or the police, yeah. Exactly. I got one of those. Yes. I got one of those because I parked just into a blue bay, a disabled bay, which yeah. is against, I think it's against a bylaw, isn't it? Or maybe... And you're usually going to get those when you're on public roads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, there might be reasons it might not have been your car, it might not have been you, it might not have happened. Yeah. Those sorts of reasons. Uh, your car was stolen or uh, it just wasn't the case, it wasn't what happened. Um, they, they just got it wrong and you can prove that they got it wrong. Those are the sorts of challenges you might want to make. Uh, equally, if there's something just wildly unfair, like that Nadim Zahawi one, yeah. if you're being loaded in the back of an ambulance, <laughs> I 100% would have challenged that. You know, I, I mean, I don't know what all the facts are yeah. about that. But if, if for some reason I was being prevented, say, for example, your car's broken down and you, there's nothing you can right. do about it... You can challenge Challenge. It. And, and is the challenge for a uh, an official one, a penalty charge no notice, versus a parking charge notice, so the private... Com is the process different? Do different rules apply? Yes, yeah, so if you challenge the penalty, uh, generally speaking, the moment you challenge, uh, the, the time running will suspend. Yeah. So usually what happens is if you get your penalty charge notice, you normally get 14 days to pay it. And if you pay within those 14 days, you usually get a discount of around 50%. If you pay after that, you pay more. Now that 14 days, they will sort of freeze that period if what you're saying mm -hmm. is, hang on a sec, can we have a chat yeah. about this because it might be wrong. With the private companies, they don't have to suspend that period. Yeah. And it's up to them how long they give you. It's up to them how much of a discount they give you. It, it's fairly arbitrary. It will be in the terms that they okay. agree to. They don't have to suspend that frozen period, but you can ask them to. OK, um, uh, let's uh, take some calls and then we're going to be telling people all how they should be challenging the parking tickets. Let's speak to Maureen in Lancashire. Uh, Maureen, welcome to the show. Uh, what would you like to ask? Um, right, I was unfortunate to receive a final notice. I didn't know anything about um, the situation until I got this letter mm -hmm. saying final notice, um, which was for parking um, in a retail park. Right. Uh, went in with the business, came out, um, drove off, didn't hear anything until uh, quite a few weeks later. Um, got the letter through. So we sent them an email um, stating that I wasn't aware that I was in any breach or anything. Um, didn't hear anything. Uh, received another uh, email from someone um, stating that I'd got this outstanding amount. So I rang this company up and um, they said that, unfortunately, um, I had to, because I'd gone over the set amount where I could have paid £60 right. within the 14 days, um, I'd gone over, so the, the bill had gone up to £100. Um, and I said, well, I'd already sent a letter stating that I wasn't aware that this had happened. And um, the next notice I've got was from uh, a debt company uh, saying that uh, the case had been passed to a trace debt recovery uh, because I've got an outstanding amount okay. uh, with their client. Okay. So when I rang them up, they said, I've got to pay £190 or I can be taken to court. Oh, all right. Uh, Maureen, let me just pause you there. So we know that this will have been a private company yeah. because it happened in a retail car park. So if you come back to your car and there isn't a notice on your windshield and you get one of those letters, what can you do? Well, challenge, 100% challenge. I would say um, it depends on why the, the ticket was given to you. But by the sounds of things, Maureen didn't know that she'd been given the ticket, yeah. which suggests to me she might not have known there were, there were certain terms that she had to comply with. So it's always worth going back to that car park, taking photos of all the signage. Yeah. Because if it's not clear to you that you shouldn't be parking there or that you need to pay or that there's a period that you're allowed to park there for, Take pictures with evidence to show, because then what you can do is you can challenge it and you can say, you never made this clear to me. Mm -hmm. Equally, if you didn't get something in the post, say, for example, there was we had the Royal Mail strikes a while ago that yeah. caused all sorts of issues and people weren't getting their notices, challenge that as well, because it's certainly not fair that you be issued a ticket and you not know about it and suddenly have debt collection. So challenge, challenge, challenge. 
if they are still being tricky, a lot of these companies are also signed up to trade bodies, so you can also complain to trade bodies. So for, in Maureen's case, where this has been escalated to a debt recovery yeah. uh, firm, what can she do? Well, with debt recovery firms, they still have to go to court to get an award against you in order to come and knock on your door and, and mm -hmm. take your money. And I, I know, Maddie, you were saying that I, you were worried bailiffs were going to show I just, up at your yeah, house. Yeah, I thought, oh, my God, if I don't pay this, I'm going to have, like, £400 and bailiffs yeah. knocking the door. They use they intimidation. Just, yeah. They use intimidation to get you to pay. Exactly. But would you say, Lisa, oh, hold your nerve I would and, say, get, and have your day in court? Hold your nerve. If you are adamant that you are in the right, obviously there are some occasions when you know you shouldn't have parked somewhere and those are not worth challenging. But if you are adamant that this is an unfair ticket and if someone does challenge you and say, right, I'm taking you to court and you've got evidence to show that this is unfair, let them take you because most judges are never going to find in favour of a company that is treating consumers in an unfair there, way. Sorry, is there like, you know, um, you can go as a consumer, you can go to the ombudsman a lot, can't you, if you, if you don't think anything is right. Is there something like that you can do? So the, park, the private companies do have these trade bodies, mm. so you can go to them and the trade bodies have to ensure that they're complying with the rules, the codes of conduct that they sign up to. And actually, if they're not, the trade body might step in and say something. The other thing to note is these um, debt collection companies, it's an awful faff for them to go to court. Mm. And whether or not they choose to actually take you to court is a whole other okay. story. All right, uh, Maureen, I hope you find that useful. We're going to take more of your calls on this after the break. Uh, but before we do that, let's just uh, start giving some of the advice that when you've already touched uh, yeah. some of it already. Um, so first up is that the odds are in your favour. Yeah. So this is sort of quite encouraging because actually, how many tickets get uh, overturned when you when you apply? When you... So actually, of those that are challenged, it's it's over half. Over half, yeah. so over 50% of the time, um, you're going to get the desired uh, result. Um, so next up, as you said, act fast. Tell us a little bit more about that. There is usually a short period of time in which you will get a discounted rate. And as I said, when you have these official penalty notices, if you challenge, that period will be suspended so mm. that if you are then told, no, you do have to pay, that period will continue afterwards. So do make sure that you challenge immediately and get as much evidence as you can to make that challenge. If that involves going back to the car park to yeah. get your evidence, then do that. And that was actually, you, you've already touched this, so let's, let's just briefly put it up there as well, gather evidence. Yeah. Now, this is particularly important when you're in the private uh, car parks, retail car parks, etc. Make sure the signage is where you can, you know, it's actually made abundantly clear that you have to pay what the rates are, etc. Exactly. And what I would say is unless there is a massive sign at the entrance, yeah. I would challenge immediately because you, the moment you drive into that car park, you're being told you're entering into a contract with the private company. You cannot be entering into or agreeing to enter into contracts unless you know you are. Yeah. So if they haven't put a great big sign, preferably with flashing lights on it, then it's not good enough. And what about Amanda's case where you have one of those big machines in front of you, it's not working, and right up at the, there's so much writing on it, and right up at the very bottom, like, if the machine's not working, dial this number. Is that... Well, that... Honestly, I would challenge that too, yeah. because the, the problem that you've got where these machines are not working, first of all, it's their job to make sure these machines are working. Yeah. So if the machines are not working, it does, it introduces a little bit of scepticism in me that I'm thinking, hang on, are you just making it difficult for people yeah. to pay so that you can get these penalties? Obviously, not all companies are doing that, but we hear an awful lot from people saying that this is happening to them, that the machines aren't working. I know you were in a rush, mm. but it's always worth popping back when you've got a bit more time and actually taking pictures of yeah, something not know. working or videos of it not working, mm. because then you can prove I couldn't pay even if I wanted to. OK. And the last piece of advice you're giving up involves witnesses. So tell mm. us a bit about that. So if there's anyone else in the car park at the same time as you who might also be struggling with the machine or who also thinks that the signage isn't good enough, it's always worth getting someone else to back you up. Witnesses are great. In any scenario, a witness is great. So if you can get the details of someone else who's in the same scenario as you who might back you up, it's worth doing. OK. Well, look, we're going to pause there. Uh, but Lisa's going to stay with us. I'm going to be taking more of your calls on this after the break. I know plenty of you are waiting to speak to us, so we will get to you in just a moment. Plus, we're going to be asking, is it right to charge young drivers more insurance? Premium for drivers uh, aged 25 or under have gone up by nearly £650 a year. Do you agree with that? 
Are we unfairly penalising young drivers? 27 822 is the number that you need. We'll speak to you after the break. Welcome, if you just joined us, uh, Lisa, Amanda and Emily are still with us. And now more of your parking calls and on your parking tickets. What can you do uh, if you get a parking ticket? How do you challenge it? Uh, let's speak to Stephen in Newcastle. Uh, Stephen, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. What would you like to ask? Um, just, I was given a parking ticket for, by a, a well-known uh, car, car park up here. Yeah. And the, I give the evidence that I've, I've paid it Obviously, it was paid, paid by debit card, and I give the evidence, and they're still chasing us for, for the money. And if the, the told us the bailiffs will, will attend if I do, don't start pay, paying it. And just looking for some advice. Okay, um, so Stephen has given proof that he's paid it, but it, the message doesn't seem to be getting through to what seems like a private car parking company. Yeah, and this is what's very, very, very frustrating is very often it's the customer service that's letting people down and, and, and really scaring people into thinking that they're going to get themselves in a lot of trouble. With this sort of thing, I would say go to the, the trade body that this company belongs to, because if the company itself is not listening to you, I mean, come on a show like this, talk about it on a show like this, get yourself on Twitter, social media, talk about it on there. But it's really important. If you have paid and you can prove that you have paid, then you are not going to have bailiffs turning up at your door. They have to go to court to get an order against you to say that you owe the money. All you do if they take you to court is prove that you've paid and it's on them to deal with it. It's Stephen, very quickly, you live up in Newcastle. I used to live there. Speak, speak to the journal or uh, the other... Speak to the local paper. I know the local papers, but if you can get a journalist to phone the company on your behalf, you might find that it suddenly gets sorted, just like Lisa's just said. Good yeah. the, 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 worst, the worst thing is, they sent us a picture of the, of the windscreen with no ticket. It was the left-hand side and the ticket was actually on the right-hand side, but there was... The, the deliberately missed the ticket out when they sent the picture. OK, Stephen, this is a very good point, uh, and a point that often comes up. The display of the ticket, that shouldn't mean that you have to pay a fine. If you can prove that you've paid, whether the ticket's been displayed correctly or not, or it might have fallen down from your dashboard, that's immaterial, isn't it, if you can prove that you've paid? If you can prove that you've paid, you have complied with the terms. So it's absolutely essential that you keep proof, keep that receipt, keep that ticket to show that you can uh, demonstrate that you have paid, you've complied with all of the terms that have been imposed on you and they cannot then be challenging you if all you've got to do is provide the receipt. OK. Uh, Stephen, good luck with that, but I think a very good piece of advice there from Emily as well. Get the local paper involved. Get them to call up and go, hmm, we hear that you are uh, pursuing someone who's showed you a receipt of payment and you're still not letting him off the ticket. Uh, let's speak to Hannah in London. Uh, Hannah, good afternoon. What would you like to say? Uh, hello. So, <laughs> so I have a problem which I think is unusual because um, the space which they want me to pay penalty tickets for belongs to me. I bought uh, my flat in 2006, which uh, the car park space was uh, attached to my flat, I pay for this car park space extra, I think, uh, 13,000 pounds this time. Right. And uh, believe me or not, <laughs> I have tickets regularly, and um, I, which I refuse to pay. I get in touch with this company a few times. I explain them situation. Uh, they don't listen. Um, they send me last letter and ask me to pay them amount due 1530 pounds which obviously i'm not going to pay i collect all the yeah, yeah yeah i collect all the tickets i mean all the letters from them and i'm waiting for them to take me to the court and when they talk me to the court what what uh, they have to watch their space because i'm not going to give up and i'm going to fight for my rights but also what i want to want to say i think that government english government should step up and do something about it because these guys are just a cop voice and they make our lives miserable. Okay. Uh, Hannah, thank you. I, I, I've spoken to people who, like Hannah, you know, even if you know you've done nothing wrong, even if you know you're not going to pay the money, the fact that you're being badgered yeah. by people mm -hmm. is stressful. Yeah. And you could hear it there in Hannah's voice. She's parking in a space that she owns. There's obviously some miscommunication. Yeah. But what can she do other than, I suppose, go to court? You know what? This exact scenario happened to me. Oh. So I had a parking space that I owned uh, or 
I had purchased as part of the leasehold of my flat and I kept getting tickets in it. The first thing I did was I went to my management company that owned the block or was managing the block of flats because they're the ones that employ the private car parking company. So speak to whoever it is that is employing that private car parking company. Very often there's meant to be a permit in the window. Mm -hmm. Now, um, either get yourself that permit so that this doesn't keep happening or get yourself excluded from the permit system. But that's something that your management company can be doing. Equally, Hannah was saying she's gonna challenge this. She's waiting for a moment in court. And I say good luck to you because this type of behavior is absolutely outrageous from these companies. Yeah. Okay, Hannah, good luck uh, with your court date. Uh, let's speak to Elizabeth, who's got in touch from Liverpool. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. What would you like to say? Good afternoon. Um, a good few years ago, um, I was taking a, a family member for some counselling sessions in Liverpool city centre and had to park in a private car park. <clears throat> and on two occasions, I was sent a parking ticket for £100 each for staying, uh, for staying in the car park over my time for one of them. And I think because the other one wasn't displayed. Anyway, I kept the tickets um, and I went online, did a bit of research and I got a template letter explaining my situation, why I was challenging. And at the end, um, the most important bit to put was I will have my day in court. And miraculously, uh, a couple of weeks later, I got a letter back to say that um, as a gesture of goodwill, they were going to cancel both the £100 tickets. But there could be people who aren't sort of as feisty as me who would panic and would have ended up paying £200 for two tickets where they hadn't committed any offence. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Amanda, you, oh, yeah. you, you felt like that. You you, yeah. you didn't want to go through th through the, the, I the stress? Yeah, I couldn't bring myself. Well done, Elizabeth. I mean, you know, I wish I did the guts to do it, you know, and, and challenge them. I was so scared that I'd have, you know, bad credit or someone would knock my door or, you know, I'd, I'd end up paying £400 that I just paid it. Yeah. But uh, we shouldn't be doing this to these... Because they're bullying us, aren't they, yeah. you know? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Lisa, here's a question. Uh, Elizabeth was fortunate enough, she found... Now, there, there are templates, uh, if you look on the internet, there are templates of, of, of the kind of letters you should write and also sort of saying, you know, I will see you in court, you know... What happens if they reply and say, yeah, no, we're not going anywhere. We're not, we're not going to cancel. We're not going to show you that gesture of goodwill, which always comes back, both with private companies and also with, with the ones from the council. So if you appeal and you lose, what happens then? So... On those template letters, I'm just going to do a very quick plug for Witch here because you can get a free template letter on the Witch website, witch.co.uk. You pop in your details and it'll populate the uh, the letter for you. You can send it off. It's a really good letter. Mm -hmm. So um, do that mm -hmm. next time. Yeah. Um, uh, if you do have a company that's challenging you, then what I would say is, depending on where you live, so say, for example, it's the council uh, challenging you. If you're in London, there's a whole uh, its own ecosystem. The tribunal is a London's tribunal. If you're in Wales, it's a different one. If you're in Scotland or England, mm. it's different ones again. But you can go to these tribunals and what will happen is the ticket will get frozen whilst you're challenging it. And then they will either rule in your favour or against you. If they rule against you, you just pay up. Right. They, you won't get an extra fee because you've done this. It's absolutely but how about with a private parking firm? With private parking firms, they do have to take you to court. And it's a question of holding your nerve or how confident you are that you are right. Mm -hmm. And if you are absolutely adamant that you are right, that it was an unfair ticket, that they didn't tell you what you were meant to be doing, that they didn't make it available for you to pay up, for example, then actually the court is not going to rule in their favour. So it is a question of holding your nerve. If the court does rule in your favour, then unfortunately you will have an order against you to pay. OK, and just briefly, if you go all the way to court with a private parking company, and you lose yeah. is all you pay the parking charge the price of the ticket or there's going to be legal costs there is likely to be legal costs too and and that's because in the county courts generally speaking you will be asked to pay the other side's costs if you lose but it will be down to the master of the court at the time so you can offer mitigating circumstances you can say well please can i not pay it like this they can also help you offer right. uh, payment plans OK, uh, something to consider of course uh, carol in birmingham uh, welcome to the show carol what would you like to say Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, a few years back, after using um, 
a certain restaurant car park, which I used on a regular basis. Always had a ticket, but uh, I made the mistake of going over my time uh, and ended up having to pay for it. So somebody told me, take a picture of the parking ticket in the window screen and also keep the ticket. But, I mean, it's not going to take up no time. It's not going to take up no space. And they've actually tried since to charge me for a parking ticket. I'm still waiting for the apology, actually. Right. So, uh, thank you, Carol. Good point. Keep your tickets. Keep the evidence. Evidence is really, really important in these situations because if they do try and take you to court, and when I say if they do, it's very, very unlikely that they will. More often than not, they don't. And like we said, half of all of those that are challenged are overturned. <clears throat> that gesture of goodwill that they throw in at the end yeah. of the letter happens very, very frequently. And just very briefly, if you go over, is there a leeway time that they allow you to go over? If you've gone over by a minute, no, nothing? It's case by case, so it's going to depend on the private company. Uh, okay. But if you have only gone over by a minute, challenge anyway, because it would be very unfair for them to slap 80 quid on you just because you overstayed by 30 seconds. All right, uh, look, uh, thank you for your calls on this and your messages. Now, I just want to clarify something that came up earlier this week when we were talking about getting help for funeral bills. We mentioned the British Gas Energy Trust, and I should point out that they help people with fuel bills. So if you need help with your fuel bills, that is one place that you can go. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be finding out whether the budget has made you richer or poorer. Hurrah! We'll get to find out. Uh, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has been delivering his budget in Parliament today. So, so far, he has promised the Household Support Fund, which allows local councils in England to help families via food banks, warm spaces and food vouchers, will be extended beyond the 31st of March. Also, fuel duty will remain at its current rate and be frozen for the next 12 months. And it's good news for drinkers, apparently, because he's frozen alcohol duty. Now, this freeze was due to end in August, but has been extended to February next year. So tomorrow, we are going to be joined by finance expert Emmanuel Asuka, who will be helping us unpack the announcement and work out how much better off we're all going to be, or perhaps not. So don't miss that. That's all being happening uh, tomorrow. Uh, well, look, uh, thank you, everybody, for your advice. I'm sorry we didn't get round to the young people being charged so much insurance. We'll come back to that, I know, at some point. But very useful information, uh, Lisa, on how to challenge those parking notices. I bet you... I was going to say... You would be on we'll the We'll all get your number. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you wish you challenged I it do, now. yes, absolutely. <laughs> OK. Well, look, uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you to Lisa, Amanda. And Emily, they've been brilliant. Jeremy's back at 9.15 tomorrow morning. Wonderful afternoon, wherever you are. I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow. Remember, we'll be going through the budget and finding out if we're better off or worse off. <laughs>